All right. What's up, everyone? Uh, we are live, and I have an amazing guest for you guys today. Uh, this is an episode of Press the Damn Button. So for those that are watching on live stream, podcast episode will come out in about uh, three weeks or so. Um, we are streaming on multiple platforms. I'll mention that with our sponsor. Um, so I will see your notes. Uh, I will see your chat and your questions. What's up, Joe Morris? We're on Periscope uh, checking in, uh, especially if you're over on Periscope. This will be even a little bit more fun. This is uh, our connection here. Uh, so I'm gonna jump into the intro. Uh, we're gonna, this is Press the Damn Button, really focused on amplifying the amazing people in my network. And I got a great one for you uh, today. So uh, with that, let's do like five seconds and then we're gonna jump right into it. Welcome back to another episode of Press the Damn Button where I'm hopefully connecting you with some amazing people in my network that have pressed buttons along the way. We've talked about how you should tighten your shoes to uh, do great things. We've talked about buttons as far as storytelling. We talked, I had a great conversation with Jared about um, being, being an activist and the role of what it means to be an activist uh, in today's day and age. And I've got another great show with you for you guys today. Uh, one of my really good friends, we haven't talked in a while. And funny enough, we are doing a true COVID interview. Uh, we're both on video actually in the same city. We're actually both <laughs> happen to be in, in Atlanta um, right now. Um, but um, I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about Africa. Africa is not only an amazing beauty and travel influencer but her she shines a light on everyone and shines a light on everything that she does and a lot of the things that she's built her career on in a very weird segue has a lot to do with the way I've built my career and although we both kind of come at it from different worlds um, we both kind of built our business and our kind of reputation very similar so I'm beyond excited to have uh, Africa on here and before we get into Africa and I'll talk a little bit more about her uh, intro uh, shout out to our sponsor uh, Restream. Restream is the official sponsor and they're the ones that are powering um, this live broadcast right now and I haven't been able to announce this in previous episodes but I have a brand new exclusive offer that expires on Halloween so if you're listening to this after Halloween, you're gonna have to send me a message somewhere or whatever. We're gonna have to figure out something. But for the, they've only done this four times in the history of their company and they're doing it for me right now. 50% off for the lifetime of the subscription that you have with Restream, the live streaming tool. It allows you to Restream to up to 30 channels at once. We're live on YouTube, Periscope, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitch. You can pick just about all different channels. You can also embed the different broadcasts in your website and your landing page. Uh, definitely, you know, I've been using them for all of the uh, podcast episodes I'm recording here. You can have up to 10 guests live in the browser. I was able to say I'll send Africa just one link. She popped it into her browser and uh, popped on here live. So just use the code ISOCIALFANS in all caps. That's ISOCIALFANS um, in all caps. And you guys will get 50% off uh, of Restream for the lifetime of that you have the product. A lot of the codes that you guys get out there for the first three months or the first 30 days, um, they've hooked me up and they, they were like, hey, Brian, we believe uh, in you know collaborating and connecting and uh, they're taking good care of me. So uh, thank you to Restream. Thank you guys for you know, really putting, uh, you know, going out on a limb and, and sponsoring this show. And so with that, let's get into this. And, and the name of Africa's book is Step Up, Step Out and Shine. And I remember when I first saw, uh, I think when you first promoted the book uh, back in 2018, I remember I was like, oh my goodness, it's like, perfectly aligned with who Africa Miranda is and kind of like the message that you put out there while at the same time you have such a you know authentic true kind of conversational way of uh, putting things out there as well so Africa talk give us give us your little background give us a quick little background and then I want to dive into kind of like a little bit of the origin side of like okay where did Africa get this confidence and this this shining bright light but uh, before we do that give us a little bit of, of your background well, one, Brian, it's so great to see, uh, to see you, to chat with you, because I'm like, this is the power of social and of digital, like people that, you know, you connect with online and then you get to have these, you know, great offline experiences. And then they continue like over the years as we all grow and change. But hello, everyone. My name is Africa Miranda. I'm, as Brian said, I am a beauty and travel influencer, digital content creator, storyteller. I also am a television and, you know, digital media host and personality. So I host live events, you know, like podcasts and 
you know, conferences and keynotes. And so all anything digital, like it, it is my domain. And I really love, you know, bringing my energy to that space. Um, I released my first book, Step Up, Step Out and Shine in 2018, which actually got its start the first time I said those words were on Periscope. So I would definitely, you know, love to give you guys that story today as well. And, you know, I'm just very passionate about bringing, you know, my life experiences and being, you know, and really sharing my story because what I've learned over the years in my career as I've gone from actress and model and performer and all these things to now, you know, having a career in the digital space, doing things that did not even exist, you know, five, six years ago is that I, I recognized very early on the power of just being myself and the freedom that it gave me was also inspirational and able, you know, able to give other people like and recognize that, own, that same freedom for themselves, because I do think we have so much pressure that we've got to put on this armor or these, you know, this, 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 this you know, thing of something else. And what has really, I think, served me in my life and also I'm finding in my career is that it's just been a lot easier to just kind of be me. <laughs> so that's been that, you know, that's what I take into every new thing that I try and that, you know, and that I do and that I build in my business and in my life. So we are here today that. in 2020 and here we are. I love that. And as, I mean, I know the audience that knows me really well, like, I mean, be yourself is I mean, I talk about it being like the key secret to everything that I've done. It's been the, you know, it's the the piece of it. And I, you know, I think I love that you, you know, you're from an actress to digital to beauty to travel, you know, to hosting, you know, products. But you've also kind of brought your own, not only own flair, you know, be yourself, but like, hey, I'm gonna walk my way of walking. And we, you know, for those that we connected via uh, live streaming via Periscope. Um, we both kind of dove into that platform very early on. Uh, we got to hang out for the first time um, in New York City for the original Periscope Summit, which I still think is one of the greatest, you know, 24 hours, 48 hour experience. Right. Uh, like, where is the documentary time. on that? We like, where is the documentary on that? Like, it needs that, to that is, Actually, you know, it's funny you say that because that should have been like, we. I mean, it was also one of those things where the community was so organic. Yeah. Uh, people were so authentic that it was like, I mean, I just remember feeling as like, not only are, are these my people, but like, I don't want this to end, right? And that's where we originally connected. And I think that's part of the beauty of what you said at the beginning there was like social and live video. Like, and I've always said it, like social allows you to build friendships, but it takes many, many years. But right. I really felt like live video accelerates that, right? And I feel okay. like we were in each other's streams. We were doing things like for those that were on my blog, you know, I, one of my most popular blogs for many years was, you know, eight female millennial speakers that everyone should see. Yes. Uh, Africa was one of those that I, that I highlighted. Um, and, you know, I think where where we're all at right now at 2020, there's so much going on and so many, you know, even like the, the documentary Social Dilemma came out highlighting some of like the, the touchier, scarier parts of social media. But I've always so feel like we have to kind of amplify some of those good stories. So we're going to talk a little bit about Periscope and Periscope Summit and, and kind of connect those dots. But I'm curious, like, so Africa Miranda, high school, after high school, like, what did you want to be when you grew up? And then how did you kind of start to shape that into, like, the confident woman that you are today? Honestly, you know, after high school, like going into college, like I was still very much, I mean, there were definitely other things that I wanted to do, but I also did not feel, the, you know, the confidence was not there in the sense of being able to like step outside of what, you know, most of my friends were doing or what was safe. So I was, you know, in college telling everybody like, I'm going to go to law school, like I majored in English. And that was, you know, what I was saying to everyone because it had been suggested to me that it would be good for me. And I was like, okay, you know, and it's just, you just, I think when you're at that age, you're you listen to what people tell you and you're also a little nervous you know i graduated high school when i was 17 so like i started college when i was 17 and at the time it didn't feel very young but now like as a full-blown adult like looking back i'm like wow that's like very young <laughs> to like be in college around like other like adults but you know at that time i just was like okay well i'm going to law school and i would do but i always wanted you know in my heart to do more creative things like i grew up playing the violin and piano and being in musical theater and like doing all of those things but it wasn't ever really said to me that that was like a viable career. And not even that my family would have not, I don't think that my family wouldn't have supported me. It just didn't even occur to me that I could step outside of the box. It's like, you know, you go, I was in these academic programs. So you go to, you know, you go to high school, you go to college, you go to grad, you know, you go to grad school for something and, you know, you get this good job and go about, you know, life. And I remember I was, it was, I was graduating from college and I was like, I absolutely like do not want to go to law school. Like there was, I just was like, oh God, like it was like, like someone was almost choking me. Like I had no desire to go to law school. And I was like, well, what am I going to do? Because at that point though, I was just like, well, then I've got to do something. 
And, you know, I talk about this in my book, how like a lot of things in my life were just kind of falling in my lap. So I also didn't really I was ambitious to some degree, but I also was a little spoiled because good opportunities kind of came to me. So at, right after graduation from college, the university hired me as a recruiter because I had also been like as during undergrad, I was part of an organization that did like, you know, that welcomed like incoming freshmen and did events and did things like that. So I like my first job like was the, over the summer was as a recruiter for the university. And then at the end of the summer, I didn't get my contract renewed. So I was like, OK, like now I've got to really, really figure out what I'm going to do. Um, and at the time, a new governor had just been elected. And I knew and because the thing about I grew up in Montgomery, Alabama, and it's, you know, it's Alabama, but Montgomery is the capital. So politics is like a big thing. I had friends, parents who were judges. And like, you know, when you were in college, we all volunteered on campaigns. And so I knew, you know, a lot of people, but I didn't look at politics as like a career ambition, but I did need a job. And so people knew I needed a job and I ended up being like one of the youngest like political appointees for the governor's staff. Wow. Alabama. So like I said, so again, but another kind of instance of something kind of just, you know, falling into my lap. And I was the executive assistant to like a new commissioner and basically helped build a new department within the governor's office, their department of children's affairs and kind of like fell into politics. I was doing advance work for the governor and fundraising. And so that's then where I thought life was going to go. I was like, well, I'm, you know, I was at the time I was, um, on one of the presidential campaigns and it was very much a thing of like okay well i'm gonna move to dc and you know you just you said there was okay this new track because again it wasn't necessarily something that i was passionate about but i was good at it and you know again people tell you that you're good that this is good and you should be excited this is great so i was like okay but then i got the opportunity to move to new york because also quietly i was still driving to atlanta two hours every weekend to like sing and record and get in the studio and work with producers because I also really wanted to be a singer. And I had the chance to like join a girl group in New York. So I like quit my job, left, I bought a house, like everything. Quit my job, wow. left my house and moved to New York. And that is like, that was my first time stepping out of what was safe. And that literally was like the, the, the first tipping point I think in my life that set me on the trajectory that got me here. Well, first, let's go back to that. So you graduated high school at 17. That just, yeah. High school was easy to you. You kind of blew through it. What, what was that? What, well, what? High school for me, like, was fun. Like, I had a great time in high school. Like, I still am good friends with people I had in high school. I was on newspaper staff. I was, you know. Oh, I, mean, I was like, newspaper as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, high, like, I love, like, high school was not a like, dark time for me at all. Like, I love, right. like, I had a lot of fun. I was very active at good friends. And, like, you know, so it was, I mean, I had, my mother was very strict, so I didn't get to party as much as I would have liked. But in terms of, like, the experience for me, was like I, I loved high school and even same with college. Like I literally like I would say I started flourishing in high school, but and then college like fully blossomed. So it was it was just but again, you realize that you're when I look back, you're flourishing, but you're still doing so like in a very safe bubble, if that makes sense. For like, sure. you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I, you also and you also mentioned kind of like the lock and things falling in your lap. And it was funny, you know. So our, uh, episode three of this uh, of this uh, podcast, uh, my friend Mike Ganino was on, and he went to uh, Second City, was an act, you know, did the acting side as well, and he talked a lot about telling your story, and that you know you'll find that like eighty percent of people that are successful, eighty percent of it was luck, right? And and we we assume it was luck, right? And like yeah. we almost have to like we have to own that, right? And, and like because when he said that, I was like. Man, and then the more I got interviewed, I was like, "Oh yeah, I just raised my hand first. Like, I was lucky that I like I wasn't on the phone call whenever someone right. someone came in and asked us what to do." And and you talk a little bit about luck, but there's also at like at 17, being you know going to college, having the like the law school, but also then you know attacking the things that you went after from the girl group going to New York. Mm -hmm. Like, where do you, was it was it a mentor? Was it your parents? Was it family that gives you like the confidence to kind of go all in in what you're doing? I, I have been very fortunate in that. And I don't know if it's like the only, I'm an only child, you know, I'm a Capricorn. Like I just have always been very self-motivated and, you know, growing up in the South in Alabama, like, you know, and one good thing I will say is that my family traveled a lot. Like I was born in Boston, but we moved to Alabama when I was like three. So, but we would go to Boston every year. So I was, you know, I was getting exposed to like city life. We would go to New York. We would go, you know, on cruises. You know, we would, my family believed in traveling. Right. So it, it, even though I grew up in, you know, in Alabama has not changed that much since I was younger. But I had a worldview that was, you know, a little bit more broad than some of my peers. And so for me, it was like, I think there was always something in the back of my mind of like, this is cool, but like when I get the opportunity, like I'm getting out. 
And I think that was just it for me. Like as much as I was on the surface going through the motions of what was safe, I knew in my heart that if I had the opportunity to like get out of here, I was going to get out of here. So when the opportunity came, I just like, you know, I took it like it was very much a thing of and I had literally like just bought a house. I think I was like 23. Like I'd bought a house. Like, you know, you're just like going yeah. through the adult motions. Like I bought a house. I had a car. I worked for the governor. I was so bored, you know, but <laughs> again, doing these things that are like what you should do. But again, in the back of my mind, there was always like, if I get the chance, I'm going to take it. And when I got that chance, I took it and I just didn't look back. And, and now that I think about it, like, yeah, I don't, there was nobody like motivating me or telling me. I just think even as a small child, I always was, I've just always been very sure of what I liked, what I didn't like. I was always very verbal, very like, you know, I could always express myself. Right. And I just think that that was, you know, even though in some ways I was, and I still can be very shy because I think there is that only child thing. I, but, but deep within, I'm also still very sure of what I want and don't want, if that makes sense. I love that. Yeah. That's self-confidence. Right. And I, a little bit of that is like, the idea that, hey, I'm going to take it on and kind of figure it out as I go, right? right. I think that's a, like a beautiful trait. It seems to be a trait of a lot of the people that I've had on the show where it's you know, like, hey, some are introverts, some are extroverts, mm -hmm. some aren't afraid of failure, some are you know want to be perfect so that it kind of leans in their own different direction. You know, like there's, right. a, there's a variety, but that, like, that self-confidence, right? That, that, that belief in yourself right. seems to be you know, something that shines through, you know, kind of across the board. Um, I'm curious from like the be yourself side, right? The being like self-confident and then kind of like owning who you are. Like I've learned that those are two different things, right? Like I, yeah. I, was, I was always very self-confident, very, you know, mm -hmm. um, boisterous and very able to put myself out there. But it wasn't until actually recently, in, you know, in my late thirties that I figured out like this, where this kind of mix was for you. Like, you know, you, I mean, you, you did stuff on TV, you've done stuff, you know, travel and you hosted shows and you have the band and you had like, law and politics, where where do you think, like, was it early on that you kind of got that be yourself, like, I could stand out? Because like, for me, I worked for the government, I did the same thing you did. I bought a house at 23, I got married, I worked for the US government, got my car, um, and, but I was very similar in like the, oh, this is, now that I did what everybody told me I was right. to do, like, where do I, where do I figure out my own lane? And you know, even as I like, was not wearing a tie or I was wearing a hat on stage, um, you know, even in the government, like, to me, it was still part of that, like, I, I want to be noticed, not like, this is who I am, take me for what that is. Where did, where, where did that kind of fit out for you? Because I mean, you shine really bright with that and kind of everything you've done. Honestly, I, the moment I think that I really, I mean, I, I think in some ways I've always just like, I like myself, like I'm like, I want to do what I want to do. And I mean, again, and I feel like some of it is when you're an only child, you are kind of left to your own devices. So you got to kind of figure out how to entertain yourself and, and, and do what you like and, and those kind of things. So I'm very comfortable being alone in the sense of if I'm the only person who wants to do something or the only person who's ready to make this decision, like I very much, you know, can trust myself and I'm okay with that. So I, I do think that that has a big piece to do with it because when you don't grow up with siblings, you don't grow up with like a committee of people to kind of run things by and choices. And you know what I mean? Like I was like, I'm the committee. Like, it's like, do I like it? Do I not want to do it? You know, like there's, there's no like community for us to kind of sit in and like sit in the circle and figure out what are we going to do? So I am, I think that gave me a difference of like type of confidence in that. Like I didn't always, always feel like I had to like wait to see, you know, what someone else thought I was going to do. But the, the, I don't think I ever really truly understood the power of being like really myself was until I was on the reality show on Bravo. And that was back in 2013, because again, that was like, I literally had turned my life over to like producers and I was like, oh, this is horrible. <laughs> like this is this is like this. There is nothing that is worth turning your like turning yourself over in that way. And but what I but two things happened. One, I learned that I did not like that and I never wanted to do it again. But the other was that even within the madness of that show and all of those things and just the craziness of it, I still was being myself. And I was and, and I for the first time recognized the power of building connection and community of just being yourself because to this day, I literally still have people that reach out to me that are like, you know, I still follow you from the show. I really appreciated this. And like, or people that have met me and like, oh my God, like you're actually how you seem online. And I'm like, yes, yeah, like that's too much work <laughs> like to, to have a whole persona, you know? And I also just knew from work, you know, working and being in entertainment, I knew how like disappointing it would feel when I would meet people that I had looked up to or would be excited to meet. And they were like, either just horrible or not what you thought. And I just was like, I didn't want anyone to ever have that experience because I do think I recognize the responsibility that comes with having like any type of platform 
And I recognize the power that you can use it for, for good and to help people. So it's like, why would I then like give someone a horrible experience when they, when they interacted with me? So I just was like, let me just be myself. Like, and either that's going to work or it's not going to work. Cause I don't really have the energy to like give you a fake life online. Like I, and I see people do it and I get that that's their choice, but it's, it just seems exhausting. The hardest thing in the world. I, I, 2013 was the year I figured out, like I just hated social media. I hated everything online. And that's yeah. when I realized like, wait a second, it's cause I'm trying to be something I'm not, right? I'm trying to tell the story that other people, like that is way too much work. And people that do it, like, although it's not the way I would do it, I commend them on the amount of work that that takes, right? Like, right, but like because, I mean, being able to, like showing up as yourself is a lot of work, right? Then showing up and then doing it as, as someone else. And, you know, I also remember it was, I think it was 2015, mm -hmm. I posted a picture of you and I, it might've been Instagram or Facebook. And I had a bunch of comments about the reality show. And I'm like, I think you, like that's Africa from, like from Periscope, like we're buddy. And like, you know, there was like a little bit of a, a disconnect there for me. I was like, oh, wait a second. Like there is this other world, especially because like I apply to be on Big Brother reality mm -hmm. TV um, five different times, made it to the last interviewing process one time. Um, unfortunately, that time was the time I ended up having to pull myself out. My third daughter was being born right around that same time. Um, but you talked about you know, like what you learned in that experience, right? So, yeah. you know, girl band you did the reality tv you also kind of mentioned like you turn yourself over but also found yourself like that that idea of like uh, you know actually i'd first love to hear like how did the reality tv show come about mm -hmm. and then what would you say like are some of the things that you still kind of either learn from that you'll never do again or learn yeah. from like hey i can still double down on that from from the reality show well, it was another thing that fell in my lap. Like <laughs> that, and I feel like that was also a lesson. I was like, I need to be more. And I talk about this in the book as well. Like I was like, after that experience, I was like, I need to be a little bit more proactive and like figure out what do I want? Because things are gonna fall in my lap and come to me clearly. But if they're not really what's a fit, you know, I mean, I, I wanted to find things that were really a fit for my life, not just like opportunities for opportunity's sake. But with the show, it was, um, you know, again, living, I was living in Atlanta at the time. And that was when like a lot of shows were starting to like pop off. Like I think Housewives of Atlanta had maybe just finished their first season. Um, like there were like Love and Hip Hop wasn't even on the air yet. None of those things. But a lot of things were starting to be taped here. And I had met producers from some of the other shows. And one of my good friends had been contacted by producers about a um, possibly being on a dating show. And at the time she was dating, you know, somebody really seriously who was now her husband. So she was like, you know, I'm not a good fit, but I have somebody that I think was great. And she recommended me. I met the producers and like, you know, and it was all she wrote. So the show started off supposedly it was going to be like a dating show about singles. And then it kind of kind of changed it. But it was like, again, literally, I was not like out, like actively searching for, you know, for a show to be on because, it, not, not at all, but then, you know, it literally fell in my lap and I did it. But what I will say that I learned from it was I use a lot of like the production and storytelling techniques that I learned because there's a reason why reality shows are still successful to in yeah. 2020 and are never going to go away. There's a way that the stories are told, that they're crafted, that I use when I create my own content. So, yeah. I mean, I don't, so I'm learning to look back on, like, yes, there were things about it that I absolutely didn't like, but I learned a lot just as a creator and from a production standpoint and like how to easily put stories together and create content on the fly that can look really good. So those types of things, like I, I learned so, so much just like watching, 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 watching. And just seeing how like reality shows are like master classes and how to create connection and community and yeah. you know like like people that are like get so invested. And one of the things that like the head of the network told me because our show our show only had one season, and I remember I was meeting with the network when it was over, just to kind of talk about like some just ideas and different things that I had. And the head of the network was just like, you know, we ran the numbers and they were like one piece of advice or just information that we could give you. They were like, we ran the numbers and they were like, people like you. They were the, they're like, they care about you. They want you to do well. They are like invested. Like they, they were like, you have been able to just genuinely connect with people. And they were like, hold on to that because that's going to be something that you can use, you know, and, and, you know, use for the rest of your life. And I understood it was weird because I think that was something I'd always kind of known in my life, but I never really knew how to verbalize it. Yes. And also at that same time, social media was starting to become what it is now. And so all of that kind of clicked for me, like in that moment, because like I was on Instagram when Instagram was a photo editing app, like when it was not, you know, when it was not this thing. And 2013 was also the first year that I got paid by a brand to like post about product. So like all of these things were kind of starting to happen. 
And I was like, something's happening. You know what I mean? It was like, I was like, I don't know what's happening, but something's happening. And I was like, I know that my currency is what I'm naturally able to do, which is build community. And I can do it virtually. In per you know, it's like what I'm able to do in person. Thankfully, I'm blessed to also be able to do online. And I was like, if I can figure out how to make all this come together, I was like, something's happening in digital and in social media. And I need to make sure that I can like understand it and, you know, and be a part of it. I love that. And, I, and that's so true. Like, you know, I, I was a big reality TV fan. And I remember part of the, you know, other than the human condition was the, the art of like directing people in a certain way, giving them swim lanes, but letting the magic happen, right? Like yeah. letting that, like, and being that producer, but also that real time and leaning into what works all of a sudden one piece of drama seemed to pop off. Mm -hmm. Well, now how do we continue that drama to be where right. we need, right? Like, and I think that's such an interesting concept because when, when, when people talk about social media and how like the algorithm dictates what we see and like no one's a fan of algorithms, but like there's kind of like, hey, we are stuck with it. And I, and I it's so funny, we have a lot of uh, ties there. Like 2013, first year I ever got a, a brand to pay me for any uh, you know yeah. product placement. I was also like, I remember celebrating that we could post Instagram photos to Facebook. They finally added that button. Like right, exactly. it was like a photo editing only, right? Like, and I remember like I signed up because it was like, we do one thing and one thing well. And I was like, oh, like that sounds like a cool social network. They do, right. you know, now it does. 47 things with you exactly. know, buttons and things all over the place. But, you know, I, I love in that story, a lot of what you're talking about was, you know, you got someone that's kind of reassure you and like, hey, st people like you, you connect with people. But there's also a segue where I think influencers, the traditional influencer, that gets an overnight success, right? That might be a reality TV star right. um, or might be someone that, you know, like a TikTok star that all of a sudden, Right. Part of the thing that I think they really struggle with, and which is like something that I try to highlight, but I, I struggle sometimes connecting there, which I would love to hear your thoughts, was mm -hmm. knowing that you that you connect with people, knowing right. that you can build community, but knowing how to turn it into a business. Oh, okay. I lost you for a little bit, Brian. I'm oh, sorry. So tell me that question one more time. Yeah, so, yeah. So, but knowing how to turn it into a business, right? Like turning the connection and community into a business. What does that mean to you? Like, how do, how do you look at that, that kind of concept across? Well, it's if you're going to do what we do and I think do it sustainably, like you have to look at it as a business. And like, honestly, to my time, like on Periscope is the first time where it really started to click for me. And that was a lot of what I used to talk to creatives about because I it was something that I was also figuring out in my own life yep. because, you know, so much of what I do and had done up to that point was really just waiting. Like when you're an actress or model, you're going to auditions. Like I have to record two voiceover auditions when we're finished today. I have two more on camera auditions tomorrow. And it's great. But again, you're just kind of putting something out there. You're hoping the casting director likes it. You hope your agent submit. You're just kind of, there's a lot of things that are predicated on other people's choices. And what I recognized about, you know, the digital space was that we could start to create our own opportunities and our own content and our own stories and really start to make our own magic. And that for me was, I was like, that was priceless. And, you know, I looked at, you know, the, the content that we create for others. And I was just, you know, even when I realized about, you know, I spent 10, 15 years being the faces of beauty brands of like multi-million dollar campaigns, like on billboards and stuff in other countries. Yeah. And then I was like, well, then somebody was like, well, why don't you have your own products? I was like, good question. You know, but so it's just what was happening for me was that I realized I was getting a wealth of knowledge and education just by being part of other things. And I was like, let me take all of this and start to apply it to myself. So for me, it is a business. Like Instagram is not a social platform for me, like for fun. It is on, like it is literally a work platform. So if something is posted, it is part strategic of a strategic overall plan for my brand or my business to grow, to generate income in some form or fashion. Like that's how I like it was. And I think for me, it was just a decision that I made. I was like, mm -hmm. I enjoy social media. But once I saw that it was something that I could, you know, literally change my life with financially and my opportunities, I made the decision to be very serious about it and say, well, then this is how I'm treating it. Versus being like, you know, and, and I'm not saying that that works for everyone because I know right. someone's like, well, I just want to post my dog. Well, and that's okay too, but I'm not posting my dog. I'm like, let's the dog take me some money. <laughs> well, you know, I think that's that's such a like everything has to have a strategic right for doing it, right? And like the strategy can be different for a lot of people. Exactly. And you know, like one of the things that you know, and I love how you kind of connected those like the dots of seeing that these things come together and right. all the different you know ways that you're kind of uh, kind of making making it work. But I'm curious, like I'm very proud to have you know team no niche. Like I don't mm -hmm. have a niche, a niche. But you hear a lot, especially I would say beauty side, probably more so than anywhere else, where. Yeah. 
it's like, hey, you got to lean in and only do that and be the person that does only that. And I remember being on your live streams and being inspired by all of these things around the stuff that you did with beauty. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that, about how you've been able to, because I, mean, I think you know, we hear riches are in the niches, but I'm like, I like to prove that, that statement wrong. And I, and I think you've done that even at a, at a greater scale where you have a niche that people would associate, but you've also done a great job of, of keeping that broad. How do you kind of attack that as well? I mean, it, it, that has been a process because for me, it started with hair. Like I was modeling, you know, on hair ads. So that's how people knew me was like, you know, but I, what I realized also very early was that that whole like corner of like the market was starting to get very saturated. And I was like, well, either I'm going to only be able to talk about like hair for the rest of my life, or I've got to start again. I thought about what do I know about, about producing and producing, you are guiding your audience on a certain journey. And so I made the decision around, so again, 2015, 2016, that I knew that I wanted to do more hosting. I knew that I wanted to talk about other things, but I had to start slowly guiding my audience in that direction. And like, like, you know, and it took about two or three years, but now I've been able to broaden it so that like, it doesn't seem out of left field if I'm talking about fitness or, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm making this meal, but what I made, but what I, what I tell people, and this is something that I do with, you know, people that I mentor that I work with is that, you know, you can have things that on the surface don't seem connected, but there has to be a connection. So it's like, yes, I might yeah. be talking about travel and I might be talking about beauty and I might be even talking about politics, but if I'm talking about it, there's going to be a thread that all literally comes together. Like I'm not just talking about random politics, but if I am, I'm probably gonna be talking about the Crown Act that was just passed. That's about, you know, how now it's illegal to, you know, discriminate against women that are wearing their hair natural in the workplace. That's a story that makes sense for me and my audience versus, not to say that I couldn't talk about other things, but again, it's like looking at what makes sense for me. If I'm talking about travel, then yes, I'm going to look at what do the women that live there, what are their beauty treatments? What are the things that I put in my bag when I'm packing? You know, I'm not a fashion influencer, but I talk about clothing in the sense of how does it work for what you're doing? So if you're going to an audition, these are great pieces. If you have to speak on stage, this is a good color. If you need to do your press photos, that's how fashion makes sense. So again, I do it and I think that's where a lot of people struggle. They think they've got to do everything. No, but if you can make it all work under the umbrella of what you do, you can talk about more things. And that's been something that I can say, you know, without being whatever that I've been able to do really well. I love that. I love, and I love the, the thread, right? Because the thread is the thing that you're attaching isn't the niche. It's the thread that you're connecting the, the that tissue across, right? I think um, that's a, that's a beautiful part. Talk about the book, how the book came together and like, you know, did you always want to write a book? Where, where, where did the book fit in kind of your your scheme and your business? I always felt like, I mean, I have an English degree. Like I, you know, grew up writing. I am, a, you know, I write, but I always looked at a book as something I would do later. Like I didn't know that I, I didn't feel necessarily that I was at a point in my life where it was like time for it. But it's so crazy. The first time I said the words or that phrase, step up, step out and shine was in 2015 on Periscope. Because I was doing, uh, I know it's so, it's so crazy. Like that's, I, I always say like that year and a half, almost two years of life, like, really set so many things in motion that I still almost can't believe. Yep. But I was doing these uh, scopes called artist scopes where I was talking to creatives about how like we need to be proactive and put ourselves out there and use social media and like all these little things. And I remember like I was just in the midst of me talking. I was like, you know, people shouldn't have to find you. You know, you need to step up, step out and shine. And it just kind of like was like a little like Oprah light bulb moment. And it was just so good. And I just, it just kind of became a mantra. I used it in talking to creatives, but then, you know, thanks to Periscope, I started getting, you know, more speaking engagements. And I was talking to different types of audiences, not right. just creatives. I was talking to women, I was talking to men, I was talking to, you know, all people of different backgrounds. And what I recognized was that phrase and that mantra resonated on a visceral level because it really is about whatever that you want in your life. If you start making like actual steps to make it happen, you can have more, you can be more. And that's, you know, literally what happened. And then, you know, but again, things falling in my lap. <laughs> um, my publisher of um, the publisher 13th and Jones sent me a DM on Twitter and oh. you know, reached out to me and I happened to be in Atlanta at the time and uh, the publisher was in town and we met for coffee. And it just was one of those things where I am also very much in tune with like the spirit. And I was just like, something about the conversation just was like, you may not think this is the right time, but this is not, this is happening for a reason, go with it. And, you know, and again, when we started kind of looking through like what I had, like i started pulling from scopes, from Instagram posts, from Twitter threads. And I was like, I've been writing this book speeches. Like I had been writing this book for three years and didn't realize it. 
Oh, I love that. And and I, I talk a lot about you don't know what works until you put it out there. Press the damn button was right. a periscope, was a very ranty periscope where I was so <laughs> mad that everyone kept telling me they were inspired and they were gonna do it, but they were waiting too long. And I was just like, please press the damn button. Like I'm so tired of you waiting. Okay. And all of a sudden, like that's the only thing people were tweeting. And I was on and I was like, you know, and, and I think that's such a that's a beauty of live video, especially the years that we were in it. And I want to touch yeah. a little bit on that. Like we we both kind of dove in to Periscope right as it kind of was popping off. On, you know, Twitter had purchased right. it. Uh, Meerkat, of course, was out the year before. But Periscope, which can be called Twitter Live, which was pre right. Facebook Live, we kind of wrote right. it out a little bit once that happened. Um, but you know, like for me, part of that was, and, and I and I was explaining to Jennifer today about you, right? And I mm-hmm. I remember I connected with you for one of the reasons was that people were coming to us as live streaming experts. Right. And we were both very confident in the fact that live streaming was a vehicle for us to tell our story. Right. But it wasn't going to be our our everything, right? It wasn't going right. to be everything um, kind of encompassing. Talk a little bit about how you kind of embrace live and how those early years of live, like what, what did that all connect for you? Because I, I think you, I mean, you stood out and shined there fairly quickly and it, it was so much fun to see. It was like, I look back and it's so funny because like now people are like, why don't you go live? It's like, we, and it's like hard to explain what that time was versus just where I am in my life now. Because also looking back, like it required, like we were on there so much. Oh my God. Like, like did I do anything else for two years? Like, I know when people talk about like TikTok addiction, I'm like, you have no right. idea what Periscope was to all of us for, right. for I mean, really 18 months of like, it, Oh my goodness. You know, and you're just, you know, just on, but, but at that time in my life, it was definitely something I need. I was in transition. I was looking for a way to connect, I think with just people and myself. And I was, it was like literal like video therapy. Like I was able to like share and talk and create. And I think it just, it was just so free. Cause also it was so new. Yep. And I just also know that as a creative, I was just so hungry for an outlet to just like, do whatever I wanted to do. And it was just like, I was like, well, I'm just gonna create my own little TV network. So on Mondays, we're gonna do this on Tuesday, you know, and it's just, it just was so fun and so freeing and so exciting and so new. And it just was, I mean, I, I'm so thankful for that time because I would not be doing any of the things that I'm doing right now had I not, again, pressed the button that day. Like I saw like the thing about Periscope coming down my feed yep. and I just pressed it and jumped in. And I was like, okay, this is fun. And like, and just went with it. And I think that was the beauty of it too. We didn't know what it was. So we didn't have an agenda. Nope. And I think maybe that's why I'm so, not to say that I won't ever go live now, but it just feels like back then you could just get on for the sake of getting on. And now I don't feel like I can just jump on Instagram. Like, I feel like, okay, what am I going to, you know, it's like, I've yep. got to have my, like, you know, what am I going to teach somebody today? Or what am I going to share? Like, it doesn't, it's not like how it was where you're just kind of like getting on, like, you know, to get on. I love that you said that because I, I, that question's asked to me of all the time, right? And like part of the reason this podcast was live is like I need something that's live, like because like right. I was getting all of that like same thing. And like I mean, we were going live four or five times a day. Sometimes we were going live, mm-hmm. like you know, in each other's streams. Like it was such a, and then, and like the community too. Like I remember going to that summit that was put on by the creators, right? There was mm-hmm. there was actually multiple ones that we attended, and there was something also kind of beautiful about like organic figuring it all out together, right? Like we, we literally were figuring out everything from like product endorsements. And a lot of us were very successful prior to, but live video was just such a different animal and such a different thing since. So, and, you know, two years since like, you know, so we had the book or we had live streaming the book right. two years since catch me up on like 2018 and 2020. What's, what's Africa, what's day in the life of uh, Africa and, and really what are you kind of tapping into that makes, you know, really works for you today? What's been great now is that, again, like having more control over my opportunities and the ability. Like, I remember the first time I kind of turned something down. Like, I was like, oh, wow, I can turn things down. Now, you know, it's just because you do, there's a point in your career where, like, you got to yep. say yes to everything, you know, oh, whether yeah. it's financial or just the opportunity or whatever, you've got to say yes. And I've just been very thankful that, like, I've, there's like, I have built like that trust. And that, you know, like people know, like, you know, I mean, like there's that like like brand awareness and like brand, you know, recognition of like trust in what I do so that if there's something that's not aligned, I'm also very clear also too on what my own goals are. So that makes it easier to say if this is a fit, if this isn't a fit. And, you know, I started my um, production company, ATM Media, and that's like where, you know, I partnered with Facebook Watch back in 2018 as well to help yeah. launch that platform. And I had the Act Miranda show and that was like a really awesome experience. And now, you know, with brands, it's more partnership than it is just influencer brand. 
Yep. Uh, you know, this year I'm in the midst of like one of my largest partnerships ever with Home Goods. So we're, you know, in the middle of this year partnership where it's been great to kind of like now I can show this other side of me, which is like, no, I'm not Martha Stewart. But like, this is my spin on like, you know, again, how do you shine in your life and how, you know, and really taking people inside of how my own life is growing and, you know, and my own interests are growing as well. And, you know, just really seeing what that goes, you know, where that goes. I love that. And, you know, both of us have kind of had that like journey in the sense of like, you know, working with brands and I, I, I talk about the same thing. Like I, I partner now, I collaborate right. with brands. I don't, I don't do campaign work. I do, you know, I do, I do partnerships, um, which is takes a whole different spin. You know, I also like, you know, you have to get like the right brand at the right time, like a little right. bit of that. Um, you know, and there's also kind of something from like, I think live video taught us a lot on that, like kind of like figuring out some of these things as we go. I know Nicole right. Waters talks about that as well. Like, mm -hmm. you know, on the things that like live video where, I mean, I remember I, at one point, like, someone had passed out my address and I had stacks of boxes of gear wow. outside of my house. And most of the people didn't even put the brand Twitter accounts or you know handles on it, right? It was like, well, how, I, even if I liked your product, I can't even promote right. it. Right? Like, it like, I don't even know exactly. It was like an onslaught. But one of the other things that I like that you preach that I wanted to kind of get to here at the end of this kind of uh, conversation yeah. was, you know, kind of building out that, that like masterpiece. I know like, you know, the idea where you're talking about like knowing what you want, but like building out that, you know, six figures worth of, you know, right. income, creating that, like that not only are you productizing yourself, but you're figuring out like, Hey, when I have an opportunity, I'm going to make it work for me and for the brand. Exactly. I'm curious, like when you like advise, or even like if you were just giving advice on like that piece of it, where we're at now, because I think a lot of people look at where these partnerships come from and they're like, well, you don't have a million followers or you're not doing right. this. And we're like, no, you're right. But yet we can drive business results. We have a consistent exactly. thing to trust. How do, how do you like, how do you help people in that space? Well, there, there are a lot of people that are looking for an easy button. Uh, overnight. Exactly. No. I get it. I get it. Cause you see all these posts and everybody's like, I've made this much money as a, you know, as an influencer, oh. as a content creator. And for the longest, I was a little like hesitant about talking about like the money part of it. I because cause one, I just like, I don't need anybody coming for me. And two, it's just, you know, it's just, that just is not really, I'm just very private in that way. But what was happening was that I realized that a lot of people are trying to mimic what they see other people doing without understanding the systems and the work behind it. So I was like, okay, I, I can, let me figure out how transparent I'm comfortable being in the, you know, in the spirit of wanting to help people. And that was one of the reasons uh, why last year I launched the Shine Academy, because I had so many people that were really trying to understand how I've been able to do the things that I, you know, that, that I do. And I was like, okay, this is a way for me to share this information, to teach, to create, you know, and, and to help people do those same things because no, I don't have 400,000 followers. I don't have, you know, all these other things, but I consistently, my company consistently generates, you know, six figure income because what I can do is like no one else can do. Right. I can, you know what I mean? It's like my ability to, you know, create a story, create content, you know, like high level campaign content for a brand that resonates with the audience, you know, that makes people go purchase, that makes people, you know, that, that creates action, you know, and, and, and emotion within them. Like, that's what I do. And that's what brands pay me for, because I'm going to I'm going to deliver that every time. And I think that's what a lot of people don't realize. Followers are great. Right now, in this day and age, brands need to know what can you deliver and yeah. what I can deliver is can, like it's consistent. Like the this year, have my partnerships dropped? Of course, because everybody's have dropped. But, have, you know, but the campaigns that I do have is brands that I have worked with before and they are paying me more money because in this time that is so precarious, they're going with people that they know that they can trust that are more of a sure thing. And that's what I try to teach like the members of my community is that it's not about like, yes, if you do those things, followers will come, those whatever will come. But what you need to be more concerned about is your ability to consistently show what you can do to do it at a high level. And that is when you can build like that trust and like, you know, in that body of work, then all those other things come. But if you're not doing that, like you're not going to get like nobody's going to pay you like. $50,000 and like your Instagram looks crazy. Like your online presence is like questionable. It's not consistent. You can't even clearly say what you do. It's like brands that work with me, they come to me because they know what I do. Like I don't, like I talk about this in my course. Like I, it's, I've never like traditionally pitched a brand. Right. 
And I don't say it like to like brag or whatever, mm -hmm. but what I tell people is that what I do is I treat my life as a pitch. <laughs> like, yep. So you're not confused. You're not like, oh, I don't know what Africa does or I don't know what she's into. No, you know what I'm into. You know what I, you know what I mean? Like it's, I make it very clear and I make it very easy. I do my research on brands that I would like to align myself with. So I'm like, okay, what do I need to make sure that I'm doing so that I'm an easy, like it's a, I make it easy for them. Not like, well, I don't know if she works. Oh, this is this is exact like brands that come to me and that I work with. They're like, this was you were exactly what we were looking for or this exceed that we knew this this would be good, but you exceeded. So now we want to do more. We want, you know, that and like to me, that's what I try to teach people, because that's the key. It's not like we'll do this and try to go viral like that's I like that does not matter. It's do those things. And then these this money or these opportunities that you want will come because you're undeniable. I love that. And so I mean, like, this is why we're so aligned, Africa. And I love the way. Yeah. You pull that together because it is like when you're putting your story out there and you understand the brands you want to work with, what they're looking for. Right. The, it is like they're like, Brian, you're the exact person I needed for this. I can't believe we connected. I'm like, I can't believe either, other than the fact that I knew that that's what you were doing and I aligned my like exactly. you know, there's something because I, 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 I'm completely aligned. Like, I've never pitched a brand to be an influencer, right? It's always right. been like, hey, we want to work with you. And I'm like, I don't know if this is the right time or. Yes, like you are someone that I want to work with. Exactly. Um, and so at, where I kind of like to end this is like kind of pushing back a little bit, maybe pressing your button a little bit. Okay. And and something that I talk a lot about is like the role of transparency and vulnerability yeah. and being authentic. And be yourself being like that mantra of like, hey, I am who I am. But I love how you have like, hey, I'm a private person. And so for people that follow me, that I'm not really a private person, right? I kind of just <laughs> wear it all out there. And they make the assumption that like, to be yourself online, you have to be kind of like an open book like I am. And I've always said, no, 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 like risk first reward for what matters to you, right. figure out how to put it out there. But like, that's like me, you know, it's like the rich person telling other people like, you're like, sure, Brian, like you, I can make that happen. Right. How do you balance what you share, what you don't share? And then maybe the part where I'll push back on okay. what you might start sharing in 2020 based on the world changing. Got you. I mean, I've always been, and again, like the time on the reality show is what kind of get was jarring for me because before then I did show a lot more like my friends, my family, like their kids, whatever. But once it was, you know, a lot more eyes on me and I just saw like people can be so, I just, I was a little naive in the sense of like, I guess I was just like, well, I'm not mean to people online. Like, why are people being so crazy and so mean that I really started to pull back? But at the same time, I do understand that to keep that connection, like you have to, you know, their vulnerability is necessary. And I just think for me, it's a constant decision on as my life grows and changes, what am I comfortable sharing? And, you know, I, I, one thing that I do, like, I don't put like my friends, like, I really don't put like a lot of my friends, like on my page, like they might be in my story or their kids might be in my stories, but I just kind of was hesitant now about putting that kind of stuff like on my actual feed, because what was happening is that people were then going to their pages and kind of digging through their stuff. And it's like, I've made a decision to make my life pretty public, but if my friends or family haven't made that same decision, I'm not going to make, you know what I mean? Yep. By putting them, you know, opening them up to everyone to make that same decision. And, you know, even for me, like, I don't really put, like, if I'm dating someone, I don't necessarily put that on there. And, you know, even up until this point, I didn't do a lot of my home, but I'm actually getting ready for the first time in a couple of weeks to show like my entire living <laughs> space, which is a little like, ah! You know, I mean, people won't know, like, you can't drive it to my front door. But at the same time, like, that's new for me. But I'm just like, again, it's, and you have to kind of do a constant check in of like, as your life grows, what would you be more comfortable showing? And I do think, you know, as, as time, and like you said, as the world is what it is, I am comfortable being a little bit more vulnerable. Like, I talk a lot about how I go to therapy and what that's been like for me and how it's helped me. And, you know, when my grandmother passed the end of last year, I was very open, you know, at the top of the year about how, like, fitness, like, I had gained weight. I was, like, you know, a, a zombie for months and how, like, fitness for me this year has been, like, a saving grace. So it's what I find for me is more comfortable is I'm not necessarily a person that talks about it while it's happening, as much as I'm like, I'm going to give you the testimony of like, once I've kind of gotten to a place where I'm comfortable and I can kind of manage it myself, then I'm ready to open it up to people to share like, this is what's helping me or helped me. And I hope it can help you. And I've, I've found with my audience that that works well, because if I'm still kind of in the, in the thick of it. I don't know that I'm in a space that that's something I really want to share because also my, this is my workspace. So I think about like, if I was at an office, would I be like standing up in the middle of the office? You know, what would I be comfortable sharing? So let me share this, let me share this at my office 
once I'm comfortable. So that's, you know, it, but I do, it's a constant check-in because the world is absolutely changing. I love that. And, that, and that's so important to hear. I think that's, for, you know, I think especially, you know, a younger generation where we have coming up, it's like, Figuring out what works for you, learning what right. what you're, you know, I think a lot of it too is managing the expectation with your audience. It's what we learned right. on live video, right? Like my live videos, they it was very like the opposite of perfection. I was gonna try nine pieces of technology at once, and if it went wrong, right. no one complained. Where other people had a very consistent, very on brand, and if it went wrong, mm -hmm. people threw you through mud, right? And right. I think that that is such an important piece, and like knowing your audience, knowing yourself. Yeah. Uh, and knowing you know how to put that story out there, and I think you know the thing that you said that I love you know is that idea of you know like knowing what you want and being willing to kind of align yourself for that right. in everything that you do. And uh, I, I this is such a this is such a powerful conversation. I, and I'm so glad you joined me. I'm so glad you know we hadn't we hadn't uh, connected in a little while, and it was like yeah, and when I first started doing the lineup of this show, uh, I had written down uh, like 15, 15 guests. Like it was on my phone and my notes app. Right? And, and you were one of my first 15. And, and, and part of it was like, who are the people that I I connected with? I love seeing them, you know, kind of grow and explore while at the same time kind of are living this a, a life where I'm like, hey, if you're if you're a great person doing great things, you got to tell the world, and you got to find a way to do it in your own way. And you've done that amazingly. I love um, you have the beauty line now too. You want to talk a little yes. bit about that here? Give so, us Beauty by Africa Miranda is my baby. Um, I launched it in November of 2016, and again, it was an offshoot of like my travel and beauty, you know, influencing that I was doing. And I was like, well, how can I take what I love, which is beauty and travel, and kind of put it together? So the line is like luxury skin and body care, but it's all inspired by destination. So like, it's not like a thing of like traditional skincare. We have like a cleanser and a toner and a this. It's specialty items that kind of evoke the spirit of the places. So I have like Brazil, the South of France, Curacao, and like the products have been doing well like this year. You know, thankfully I've been on a lot of like best of lists and all that good stuff. I'm in Shape Magazine this month. Uh, yes. so, Money on the cover. So it's, you know, it's, 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 but it's like, oh my God, like, I was just for the my entrepreneurship bite is that like it's a lot different of like oh I have a business so like actually running a business so it is still like that is still I will say the thing that is like the hardest to work on because the business of myself is easy like I know how to keep that business running yep. like, <laughs> learning how to like you know product based product based business is a whole other animal so it's definitely something that has been very challenging but it's like I'm learning like so much with it so. I love that. I love that. All right. So I want to finish it up. I, I have one other okay. thing that I had uh, on my notes here that I wanted to kind of, you know, uh, from a from an influencer, from a, a face, from someone that is a, a powerful, strong black woman mm -hmm. and with what's going on from a political, from equality, right. from lots of things going on. I'm sure that's a struggle sometimes on that alliance where you're like, hey, my business and my brand and when do I talk? When do I not talk? Right. And I, and I had a great episode um, with my good friend, Jared, who, who's full on activist, has his own way of doing things. Uh, Crystal Washington was on a couple episodes ago, um, kind of talking about her approach. I'm curious, like, how have you handled that just from like your own, you know, personal overwhelm? For me, it's been like, I had to learn the importance of being a, you know, a proactive uh, ally yeah. versus a silent ally, which was yeah. a very um, eye opening experience to me. But it's also one of those things where, you know, there, there aren't. There are people that are are leaders that have to make that balance, and there's other mm -hmm. ones that are like, "Hey, I'm. I don't have to. Like, you know, I work for my business, my brand, my my company. There's something bigger there. And I think a lesson that I've always talked about was that if you're not part of the game, you can't change the game, right? And Absolutely. so, doing something that polarizes your brand, or they, that it'll end up ruining your your ability to make a true impact. Yeah. How have you How have you wrapped your head around that over the last you know four or five months? I know it's. A lifetime uh, of things right. that can change, but how have you wrapped that around when it comes to your brand the last four or five months? Well, one of those things is like when I walk into any room or do anything or anything that I'm creating that I'm doing, like I'm a black woman first. It's not like oh, I'm going to do these things and like, oh, by the way, let me figure out how it like works. It, you know, so that's going to always be the place that I operate from in terms of the, you know, the content that I create, the brands that I work with, the, the quality of what, you know, everything that I'm doing. And especially now, because I mean, of course, I'm getting a lot more calls from brands that maybe, you know, weren't dying to work with me but now it's like you know so in vogue to have you know to work with black women which i mean i'm not complaining but at the same time i'm also going to push those conversations because there are so many brands that i work with where i'm the only person of any color in the room yeah. and like that's not a win like it's not a win if i'm the only woman the only black woman the only brown person you know like and, and that has happened with so so many brands you know and so what's been great is that what 
I've seen with a lot of the brands that I've continued to work with is that they are making like actual strides. The conversations that we're getting to have behind the scenes about like, you know, me being able to recommend other influencers or other creatives to get on their radar that they don't know about, like that's important for me. You know, being able to, like you said, be in the game to do those sorts of things. But also at the same time, like I'm like the reason that I created my work the way that it is is that I can say what I want. Yep. So like, if I have something that I want to say, I'm going to say it. And what I do think that, like, again, in, in that authenticity is that with brands, they like it's very clear who you're working with, how I feel. But I just, you know, and I don't know if it's like my Southern sensibilities. I feel like I've always just been able to kind of share things in a way that like I'm proud and I can stand behind what I say. So I think that part of it is I always think about what I say. And because I know what social, it lives forever. If I am feeling like extremely emotional or extremely angry, about anything. It may not even necessarily be something that's about race. It could be about any of the right. things that are going on in the world. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you know, I take a moment to kind of step back and say like, okay, let me think about what I'm saying. Because I also recognize that there are people that like, you know, make decisions based on like people. If people are going to go buy a product based on what I what I say, they also are gonna, can possibly, you know, make other decisions based on what I say. So I take that very very seriously. So it's like, if I'm sharing information, I'm going to try to research it first. Yep. If you, I, you know, I tell people there's different ways to be active. If you don't know, if you don't want to post it on your Instagram, here's some links about ways you can educate yourself. If you want to donate some money. These are things, you know, so it's just, I'm very big on helping create a space where everyone figures can find out how they want to figure out like how to be active or how to learn more. I don't ever want to have a space where it's where I've created an environment where people can't ask a question, where they can't share, where they can't, you know, but, I, you know, like that. So that's really where I think the space where I operate from. But it's like I'm always black woman first. So it's like, no, I'm going to say what I want to say. <laughs> like, I'm going to say what I want to say. And I, love you. And, I, and I love that. And I don't want to work with brands that don't want to work with someone like that, you know. And I think that's been your that's been threaded in who you are and everything you've done since day one. Right. Which yeah. I think that's a lesson for a lot of us is that like when you when that core belief, that core foundation is strong, you yeah. can lean into these things, you know, as they go and, you know, and really be true to yourself, right? Be true to yourself, uh, which I think is uh, is definitely the most in, important piece of this. Uh, Africa Miranda, you are uh, a shining light. I'm so glad you came on. Uh, for all of those that are out there, make sure you give her a follow everywhere. Love her Instagram. Make sure you check out her Instagram. We'll make sure it's in the uh, in the show notes as well. Check out the new product line. I just bought a copy of uh, her new book for uh, my you. partner Jennifer. Um, check out her new book. It's in the in the comments as well. And I tell you what, if, if you're looking for someone to model, to understand, to take courses to under uh, to kind of lean into. Africa is the one. I've always looked up to your, uh, your ability to be true to who you are, but also build a business. And um, and it's a, it's a pleasure to be your friend, friend. And I'm so glad we, we were able to connect. I know. Thank um, you, Brian. Now you're in Atlanta too. This is my second home. I, I I'm here uh, almost as often as I'm in Virginia. So we will. Oh, once, awesome. once we get this COVID thing, you know, know. <laughs> under control, we will connect uh, offline. So uh, Africa, thank you so much for for joining me. Uh, thank you for our sponsor. Guys, remember, check out the sponsor. 50% off uh, for the lifetime of the product until uh, Halloween. If it's after Halloween, you're listening to this, uh, send me a message. I'll see what I can do for you. But uh, until next time, my friends, remember, uh, you know, the, the days of not telling your story, of letting your work do the talking for you are over. You must put yourself out there, tell your story, and good things can happen. You heard it right here from uh, the amazing Miss Africa Miranda. Cheers, my friends. Bye, guys.